My name is Benjamin Anderson, and I am the Chief Executive Officer of Kearney County Hospital, which is a comprehensive county health complex in southwest Kansas. Our infant uh, adopted daughter was uh, hospitalized in our rural community with accelerated heart rate. It was not a situation uh, that our local family physician had ever seen in the emergency department. And so uh, right away it recognized that this was unusual and probably needed uh, a higher level of care. My wife and Naomi went on an airplane to Wichita, Kansas to a hospital there. We really weren't told what was going on with our daughter other than the fact that she had an accelerated heart rate and they were giving her a drug called adenosine for some condition. After about five hours, uh, the pediatric cardiologist showed up uh, and introduced himself and asked how we were doing. And I, and I said, well, with all due respect, sir, we're, we're scared and frustrated. What's going on with our daughter? And when I asked him where you'd been, he said, well, I've been managing this over the phone since 3 in the morning. I wouldn't have done anything different if I was here. Right as he was explaining that, a pediatric intensivist came in and said, uh, doctor, uh, we, we can't get a central line in on this little girl, implying our daughter. Uh, we need you right now. This is very urgent. And so he left uh, mid-conversation, and that's really the explanation that we were given. Just shortly after that, the intensivist came back in and said that if this was my daughter, I would get her to Denver Children's Hospital right now. This is arguably the best hospital in the, in the United States for children with cardiac issues. We said, call the plane, get it over here. Flight for Life Colorado showed up about an hour and a half later, and, and uh, still we were unsure of how serious the situation was. And then an ER physician showed up who was a friend of ours and was not working there. She came in and said, um, your daughter's very sick. Are you aware of this? I said, what do you mean? And she said, her life's in danger. And I, I said, no, people had not made us aware of that. Um, and I looked at the Flight for Your Life nurse at that time, and I, and I said, what are the chances that our daughter codes on this flight? And she said, they're very real. In fact, we don't know if she's well enough to ship her. I was not told that our daughter's situation was that critical, nor was Kayla, nor was my wife. And so this was alarming to us, and we really realized at that time, this is serious, this, this might not go well. For 70 minutes, we sailed above the clouds. And we got to this emergency room here, and it was like, it was like a, a television show. There was this team of a dozen people that were waiting at the ED for us, and they had rehearsed this, you could tell. I'm watching this happen. She looked over at me, the Flight for Life nurse, as we were running down the hall and said, you see this, this lady? She said, if there's anyone in the, in the United States that you want taking care of your daughter in this situation, it's that lady right there. She's a boss. And sure enough, we're sitting in this cardiac ICU room, room one, I'll never forget it. Like a quarterback, she is just, she has, she has the play. She knows what's going on on the field and she's updated. Flight for, Flight for Life nurse gives her the report and she says, okay, intubate. And then she sits down with me and she leans forward and she says, Benjamin, my name's Shannon Buckfold and I'm the pediatric cardiologist in charge of your daughter's care and your daughter's very sick. To save her life, we're gonna to have to administer a drug that's going to restart her heart. And uh, to do that, it may send her into cardiac arrest. And if that happens, I'm gonna to have to put her on an extreme form of life support. And I don't know that it's gonna happen, it might not might be just fine. But in the event that it does, I'm not going to have time to have this conversation with you again. Is this okay with you? And I remember saying, whatever you say is, is what I'm going to go with. Thank you for involving me in that. And so she, she sat down with me 90 seconds later and said, hey, good news. Uh, she's innovated. Her oxygen sats are back up to 100%. Her breathing is fine. Her heart rate is now normal. She's no longer in immediate danger. And uh, I just want to let you know that we're going to proceed this way. If her body reacts this way, we'll proceed this way. If her body reacts that way, we'll proceed that way. Um, I just don't want you to be surprised. Are these, is this okay with you? Is this plan okay, of care okay with you? And then the second day happened where we were still here. And a woman walked in who said, Hi, I'm an infection prevention specialist and I'm here to make sure that your daughter doesn't get sick. I'm gonna make sure that your room stays very clean and it's sterilized. And so to do that, to really keep her safe, I'm gonna need your commitment to, to make sure that you're sanitizing your hands coming in and out of the room. We just need your participation in this. Can I have your commitment to join us in this way? I said, yes. And then she proceeded to clean the toilets and mop the floors and clean the countertops. She was a housekeeper. 
and she took her role in my daughter's care that seriously. Then it began to occur to me, this is systemic. This is a culture where everyone sees their role in saving lives as important. Naomi was discharged after six days. Everybody in six days walked in, introduced themselves, told us why they were there, told us their role in, their daughter, in our daughter's care, and asked us if we understood that. And that was remarkable uh, to me, that, that everybody thought enough of us to include us. The communication really complemented the excellent care that we were receiving. This story for Children's Hospital Colorado is a victory lap. But I think it also reminded me of the importance of practice. This victory didn't happen without years and years of refining processes and practicing and rehearsing. And for a little girl like my daughter, that's the difference between being a family of five and a family of six right now. And without this place, we would have lost her. To begin with, our physicians didn't know about Children's Hospital Colorado. All they knew was to, to call the nearest tertiary center in Wichita and try to get someone on the phone that might be able to help us with something like this. The second thing was there was an, there was an access issue. Even if Children's Hospital had wanted to fly in to pick up our daughter, there wasn't a runway within 50 miles that could have accommodated their plane. The tough thing for me to deal with was as the CEO of that hospital, that's on me too. And I had to live with the idea that we almost lost our daughter because of systems that were not in place that I was responsible for. Any of us that are in this uh, healthcare industry have a moral responsibility to constantly and relentlessly seek out improved, better coordinated systems. And if rural communities lack resources, let's find a way for those, those resources to be located and placed there. If uh, systems around a tertiary center like CHC and uh, those rural communities don't exist, then we have a moral responsibility to work relentlessly to, to, to develop them. Because at the end of the day, there's a, face, there's a face on the other side of it, right? Absolutely. And her name's Naomi.